Good day. This is the little bed outside our shed and I'm going to remove this which is saffron crocus which really didn't do well for us but I'm going to move it, uh, take them out and see what the bulbs are like and keep them for, for replanting elsewhere. Not quite sure where, but I'll find a place for them. And then in this place, in its place rather, I'm going to put a euphorbia. If I just come up. Do we have one? Yes. We have this euphorbia, which I think will do rather well in the place where those crocus bulbs were. Mm, I think I'm going to put this euphorbia and I think I'm also going to put this kiwi in as well. Needs a weed. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. All right, so I have the kiwi in here, which I will train to go up, hopefully, and then along there. I think that would be rather nice. And then the euphorbia, yeah, that will bush out quite nicely. I think I might put some of those saffron bulbs, saffron crocus bulbs in, because it would be lovely to have some in there. And what I'm also going to do now is give this a weed. What I was saying in our June tour, which you may have seen, is this oregano is really doing well. So I think I'm going to cut some of that back because it's above the level of the door. I'm going to cut some of that back and dry it off in the shed. Whilst I'm just sorting out this bed, I'm going to sort out the weeds along there as well. But yeah, pleased to have moved those saffron crocus and get that kiwi in and that euphorbia see you soon bye we're outside the shed today and as you may know we put in this oregano maybe a month ago something like that oh look there's a ladybird there about a month ago and I'm going to harvest some of it now. So these long stems, I'm going to go right in there and snip right at the bottom by my fingers and then tie them with twine and hang them up side down and just let them dry in the polytunnel. I'm obviously going to check the, the leaves, make sure they're all clean. There are a few with little bits of, of ground on there. But yeah, that's the job now. Actually, just looking at this ladybird, there are some black fly. Can you see? On there, there's some black fly on there. Black fly everywhere this year. Anyway, stop talking about black fly, Paul, and get harvesting. Here's our first harvest. Of the oregano for a year we'll get another one and I'm just going to tidy them all up so that they're like this so that they've got a nice clean bit so I'll take the leaves so if I take that one I'm just going to take these leaves off the end so that I have a nice clean stem like that and then right at the end I'm going to tie a knot with this twine tie about eight or ten of these sprigs of oregano together and then hang them up in the polytunnel. I've got four really nice bunches all tied up and they're now going to go in the poly. All strung up now above our courgettes and our lettuce and they'll be there for I would say a good 
four days to a week before I take them home. This poly is always open now. Now it's got to this time of year, the door is always open. So they'll be getting lots of fresh air and also lots of warm air to dry them. That's it. First harvest of our oregano. Bye. Good day. These on the end here are our Ulster Prince potatoes, which as you can see are really drying off on the leaf now. And I'm just going to tip this into a wheelbarrow as our first harvest of the year from the potatoes. Well, there are some potatoes. Not many at the bottom. In fact, none, look. There's a seed potato. Gosh. Oh, there's some there, look. I'm going to take all of them out and then we'll have a look at them when I've harvested them. This is the harvest. 1.4 kilos of Ulster Prince new potatoes. Not bad. Not great, but not bad. Certainly better than some we've had in the past where we've had absolutely nothing. The detritus over there will go into our hot bin composter and this compost will be used as a mulch. So yeah, that is going to do us a good couple of meals. I'll most probably steam all of these and then we'll have something with them and some salad and the rest will most probably go into an omelette. Okay, see you soon. Bye. Good day. Thought we'd have a quick look in the poly tunnel. This is the oregano we strung up only a few days ago. Can you hear that? Already really quite dry. You can see how these bunches have really dehydrated, which is great. Down we have, down in these beds, we have some romaine lettuce and some cos. The, the red is romaine and the green is cos. And then we've got our courgettes, not courgettes. Why do I call them cu courgettes? Cucumbers. These are cucumbers. And they are flowering, as you can see and climbing quite well now. I think these have been in about 10 days. Oh, look. Can you see that one? A little courgette. No, a little cucumber. Why am I calling them courgettes? I have spied that something has been in here, digging some holes, one at the back. Coriander and basil not done too well. Well, hasn't done at all at the back there. And need to find a filler. Those are our module trays. Our garlic, which is now really um, dry. You can see those are really dry, so I'll be sorting those out soon. Seeds from our video of what to sow this month which hopefully will have been out today some garlic here which is going to be the first garlic we're going to be using and then my bits and bobs of growing stuff and then out to a very sunny day
that's it i'm going to have a drink in the shed bye good day at the bench where our seedlings and things are coming on but these purple sprouting broccoli this side and Nero de Toscana here need pricking out and going into bigger modules and I will also be doing that parsley which really could be potted on now I'm going to get on and do that these modules on the right we're using for the purple sprouting broccoli and the Nero di Toscana they're bigger you can see they're going to be they need to be bigger because they're going to be in these modules longer than the parsley which is going into these modules which are much smaller so each module of the broccoli and Nero de Toscana will have one plant in it and likely over here we'll have two plants in each of these modules of the parsley. The parsley has been given a really good water. You can see that the leaves are starting to colour. That's because they need to be potted on. And similar with the purple sprouting broccoli at the back and the Nero di Toscana at the front. All I'm going to do, if you want to use a spoon, use a spoon. I'm just going to lever out, lever up. See, I've got two there, and you see two in that clump. So I have filled these modules with multi-purpose compost. These two purple sprouting broccoli, you can see at the bottom, there's pretty good root system on those. And I made an indentation into this module, and I'm just going to put that in there. Pull the compost around, push it right down. Sorry. Right, I'm now going to put more compost on top. You can see that layer of compost is lower. Okay, so this has been buried in the compost. It's been planted a little bit deeper than it was. And that's because brassicas like being planted a little bit deeper. They don't mind that. What I mean by that is if we come over to this one, up to here, all of this stalk on the other one has been buried beneath or planted rather beneath the compost up to this first leaf node here. So I'm going to do that with all of those into here. And then I'm going to do similar with the parsley but i'm not going to bury them i'm literally going to transplant them to the same level that the parsley is so the purple sprouting broccoli and the nero to toscana are going deeper the parsley is staying at the same level that it's growing our parsley has been pricked out and put into these modules there were 12 modules spare here so I've actually put in some more fennel seeds so I need to put a label on there let's just go and have a look where I put the brassicas okay let me just uncover these on the left is the purple sprouting broccoli and on the right is the Nero di Toscana there's some others over there which are a little bit older and I'm putting them in our brassica bed with this netting on because there are a lot of cabbage white butterflies around and I don't want them to be landing and laying their eggs on there. Anyway, that's job done. Off now for a cup of tea. Bye. Good day some simple seed sowing today. I've filled these module trays 
which are four wide by seven long. So there's 28 little modules here. And all I'm going to do is sow some seeds, maybe two or three or four seeds in each of these modules, pat them down, and then put a little bit of compost back on top, maybe another half a centimetre or so, and then give them a good water. What I do want to say um, is think about what you want. So I know that I would like a full tray of lettuce and a full tray of chicory. So one of these trays will be for all chicory. And then this tray on the right is going to be a mixture of the Marvel of Four Seasons and Northern Queen. So I'll most probably do just under half and half. So I'll do, what's that going to be? I'm going to do 16 of the Marvel of Four Seasons and nine of no, 16 and 12 of the Northern Queen. So do think about the number of things you would like to end up with. If you only want three or four or five or six, there's no point in sowing a whole module tray with C to just get effectively what you can get from four, five or six modules. Anyway, I'm going to open these packets and sow the seed. Right. I've sowed the seed. You can most probably see the seeds at the back in this one. The Marvel of Four Seasons are brown, so you most probably won't be able to see them. And the chicory are quite fine. If you just see, there's one sort of near the middle or in the middle now. So what I'm doing is just pressing them down to make sure that they're in contact with the soil and then I'm going to be topping each of these up with additional compost about another half centimeter centimeter now topped up with compost and patted down again to make sure the top of the seed is in direct contact with the soil now is the time to put in the markers that's our northern queen then from that section is Marvel of Four Seasons. And then I know that all of this one over here is the chicory. The way I do my markers, if I'm sewing in modules, is I mark from the right backwards. So anything in these modules is Northern Queen. Anything from here is Marvel of Four Seasons. So there we are, simple seed sewing job. That's the job done. I'm going to give this a really good water now and then it is going to go outside on the bench over there. No need to cover it. OK, see you soon. Bye. Good day. Amongst the tomatoes. So it's a bit of tomato care day today. I have been taking out the side shoots. You can see I've just taken out this one here. But I'm now going to take some leaves off the bottom because they are hindering flow of air at the moment, which you certainly don't want if there's the possibility of blight, which we do have rumbling around in the background at the moment. So what I'm going to do is simply go in there with my knife. You could use some secateurs and take off the lower leaves. So I've taken off four of the lower leaves there. And I think I'm going to take off this one here as well. I'm going to do that throughout all of these. These are all indeterminate, so they will carry on growing up where the ones over there are determinate, which means that they're a bushing variety. So I will be taking some leaves off them, but I won't be taking side shoots off them. Right, I'm going to get on and then we can have a look through here. 
okay so hopefully that looks a bit clearer now I'll keep on removing leaves as these get taller I'll remove the bottom leaves as these get taller what you can also do oh I'm just getting up is actually let's come over here is prune tomato leaves so this leaf here is quite long and you can quite easily prune it back let me get rid of that leaf there so you can see you can quite easily prune it back like that so we've taken possibly eight inches off there and pruned it back there are plenty of other leaves on here which will continue giving nutrients to allow the tomato to grow right they all do look a bit thinner down the bottom now they've all been strung up I've restrung them around strings and that is my job done for the day see you soon Bye.